Once upon a time, I went for a walk at the tall grass prairie near Wichita, Kansas. This place is vast, filled with wide stretches of grass as far as the eye can see. I always feel a special connection to this place. It's where I go when I need some fresh ideas or just want to be alone with my thoughts. On this particular day, I set out on one of the trails, my trusty notebook in hand. I always bring it with me because I'm a writer, and inspiration can strike at any moment. The air felt different that day, heavy and thick, like a storm was brewing but hadn't quite arrived yet. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. It wasn't a scary feeling, just a sense that there might be someone else nearby. I glanced around, but there was no one in sight. It was a strange sensation, like there were invisible companions walking alongside me. My imagination tends to run wild sometimes, which is why I love being a writer. It helps me express all those crazy thoughts buzzing around in my head, but this time, something strange happened that I couldn't explain away. Suddenly, I heard whispers. I know it might sound unbelievable, but they were real. Soft and faint, like tiny voices carried by the wind. It made me stop in my tracks and look around, trying to make sense of it all. Everything seemed still, except for one spot. There was this strange patch where the grass was swaying, as if something was moving beneath it. My curiosity peaked and I couldn't resist investigating further. As I approached the peculiar patch of swaying grass, I entered a clearing surrounded by colorful wildflowers. Right there in the heart of the clearing stood a creature unlike anything I'd ever seen. It defied imagination, like a character sprung from the pages of a fantastical tale. This being seemed as if it were crafted by the very hands of nature itself. Its skin consisted of intertwining blades of grass and delicate leaves, and its movements exuded a graceful elegance that seemed almost magical. When it turned to look at me, its eyes held a wisdom beyond comprehension. They sparkled with life, as if they held the secrets of the entire prairie within them. I felt a deep connection with this creature, an understanding that it was an integral part of the land in a way I could never be. It was as if I had encountered the guardian spirit of the prairie, watching over its vast expanse with care and knowledge. As I stood there, bewildered yet entranced, I realized that the whispers I had heard earlier were emanating from this extraordinary being. They were like echoes of ancient tales, stories as old as time itself, resonating through the air. Despite my initial trepidation, I found myself utterly captivated by the creature before me. Compelled by a mix of fear and fascination, I reached out, my hand trembling slightly, eager to touch this mysterious being and confirm its reality. As my hand reached out to touch the creature, it gracefully retreated, seamlessly blending back into the vastness of the prairie. With its departure, the whispers faded away, and the tranquil serenity of the surroundings returned, as if nothing out of the ordinary had occurred. I remained rooted to the spot, trying to etch every detail of the encounter into my memory. I pondered whether it was a trick of my imagination, but deep down, I knew it was real. The way the sunlight danced upon its grassy skin, the gentle rustle of its movements, and the profound wisdom gleaming in its eyes all testified to its authenticity. It was like encountering a being from the depths of time itself, an ancient guardian of the land. Long after the creature vanished, its presence lingered within me, igniting a story that demanded to be told. It wasn't a tale I conjured from thin air. It was a genuine experience woven into the fabric of reality. Every word I penned down pulsated with the raw emotion of that encounter, as if the story itself had a life of its own, eager to be shared with the world. The tall grass prairie holds mysteries beyond imagination, and I stumbled upon one of its greatest secrets. Those whispers rustling through the grass weren't merely the breeze, they were the voice of something ancient, something deeply rooted in the land. What I want to share isn't a tale of fear or strange, otherworldly occurrences. It's a story of connection, the bond between the earth, its inhabitants, and ourselves. Sometimes we encounter phenomena that defy explanation, yet they serve as reminders that magic still exists in our world. This magic isn't like the spells in fairy tales. It's real, tangible, woven into the very fabric of nature. 
It resides within the whispering grasses of the Kansas prairie, a testament to the wonder and awe that surrounds us. This is the story I carry with me, a tale that will forever be etched in my memory. Picture a world where every corner remains hidden from camera flashes, where secrets linger in the shadows. There's a man named John, and he carries with him only a list and a big dream. John travels across state lines, exploring places most people overlook. Along the Mississippi River, deep in the heartland one evening, he stumbled upon something unusual. It wasn't supposed to be there, and it seemed to move with a rhythm that matched his own steps. That night, John was curious. Now, I understand if you find this hard to believe, but stay with me for a moment. Think about it. Maybe there are things in this world that cameras, the internet, and satellites can't uncover. I want you to embrace the idea of the unknown even if you doubt it. Just keep an open mind. Let me introduce you to John. He's on a mission to visit every state in the USA. He keeps a list that he checks off as he goes. Every month, he crosses off a new location and he's making good progress, if you ask me. He had his bucket list, and he was determined to check off every item on it. John didn't just dream. He made those dreams happen. But on his journey, he discovered more than just beautiful sights across the USA. There were also parts of the country that weren't so pretty. John uncovered the hidden places, the ones people don't talk about, the spots where problems lurk beneath the surface like rust under fresh paint. One scorching summer weekend, John found himself driving alongside the mighty Mississippi River. Little did he know it was going to be a strange day. He couldn't predict what he was about to experience on those riverbanks. His car broke down in a quiet area where Missouri and Illinois meet, in one of those towns that only locals truly know. It happened on one of those long, winding roads that run parallel to the river's beauty. It was late, so late that no other cars passed by, and even the locals were tucked away. With no other option, John decided to walk. And walk he did. He decided to head back to the last gas station he remembered, not too far from the quaint, historic district of the little town. John was well aware of the troubled history of the area. He knew about the indigenous people who were forced off their land and the prison that once stood nearby. Disease had swept through after the Civil War, leaving behind a somber legacy. John had a knack for making such places sound eerie, and in this case, perhaps there was some truth to it. As John walked, he sensed something trailing behind him. At first, he heard it, a series of loud clicks matching the rhythm of his own footsteps. Turning around, he could see all the way back to where his car was parked, its headlights illuminating the deserted road. There was nobody between him and the vehicle. Yet as he resumed his journey, the clicking persisted. The sound was distinct, like the clack of boot heels or perhaps even high heels, John speculated. It echoed sharply in the night. Every fiber of his being urged him to flee, to escape the unseen pursuer. But John's curiosity outweighed his fear. He was the kind of person who had to uncover the truth, even if it meant confronting his own sanity. By now you understand that about him. Just as he had to discover the beauty hidden across the country, he had to unravel this mystery too. This time, when John turned around, he saw a woman standing there. She was dressed in tattered clothes, as skinny as a bone from soup, and dirtier than the river's brown water. John halted in his tracks, and so did she. She just stared at him, her eyes wide and unblinking. He described her eyes as round, almost too round, like a deer caught in headlights, frozen in surprise. Despite feeling a bit uneasy, John, being the kind-hearted person he was, tried to approach the woman. But as he took a few steps closer, he noticed something strange about her feet. Hooves, he said. Suddenly, it felt like the air around him grew heavy, pressing down on him like a blanket. He felt suffocated, trapped. Hungry, the woman uttered, her voice echoing through the stillness. She repeated the word as she shuffled closer, her mouth opening, but the sound seeming to come from all directions at once, carried by the wind. John was certain of one thing. She wanted to devour him if he didn't escape. The situation couldn't have been clearer to him. John sprinted as fast as lightning, racing back to the gas station with a speed he'd never known before. 
When he arrived, he was safe but trembling with fear. The people there couldn't help but burst into laughter when he recounted his story. After that night, John never returned to that river, never finished his journey along its banks. You see, John was many things, but he wasn't one to exaggerate. His words held truth, I assure you. So when he described encountering a woman with hooves for feet, that's exactly what he saw. If she appeared emaciated and moved towards him like a creature from a scary movie, then that's precisely what unfolded. I don't ponder whether the hooved woman truly existed. Instead, I wonder why she was there. I question why she seemed so frail, why she was dressed in tattered clothes. As John tells it, she could have been many things, a spirit from the old prison, perhaps perished from starvation, or a being from an even earlier time, from before the indigenous tribes roamed the land. As John concludes his tale, so shall I. No matter how curious you may be to explore every corner and peek beneath every stone, some parts of our world are best left undiscovered. Some mysteries are better left untouched, like patches of soil left undisturbed, and he urges you to take his warning seriously. Once upon a time, there was a time when I should have listened to everyone. Yep, it happened to me too. So there's this crazy story I gotta tell you. I was talked into going camping in the Badlands in South Dakota, and now I'm not usually one for camping, but my friends convinced me to give it a try. Let me tell you, that trip made me swear off camping for good. The Badlands National Park is breathtaking, but not in the usual way. The landscape there is so different from anywhere else. It's like a whole other world. When you're there, it feels like you've traveled across the entire country. You see these sharp, rocky peaks, and then suddenly vast stretches of prairie. It's like nowhere else on Earth. It's fascinating and unbelievable. Camping in this place isn't for those who scare easily. How they persuaded me to join them, I'll never know. But let me tell you, it turned into quite the unbelievable tale. Before we set off, we barely did any research. Big mistake. The little we did was right outside the Badlands while we were filling up our gas tanks and grabbing snacks. We got talking to the cashier and mentioned our plans, and that's when they gave us a serious warning. They said, don't camp out there, enjoy the sights, but don't sleep outside. We just laughed it off. We told them we'd come all this way to camp, and camp we would. Turns out we were the ones acting foolish. We spent the day doing the touristy stuff, like walking the boardwalk to the windows and taking the door trail. My friends were all hyped about the camping part. Me, not so much. I'm not a big fan of sleeping in tents, but soon enough we found ourselves setting up camp near Watchdog Butte. As night fell, we all gathered around our campfire. The full moon lit up the sky and the clouds disappeared, making it a stunning sight. Even though I wasn't thrilled about camping, I started to see the appeal. The sounds of the wilderness surrounded us. Coyotes were yipping and howling, and smaller creatures scurried about, but we paid them no mind, too busy chatting and planning our adventures for the next day. We were just about to settle into our sleeping bags when something strange happened. Suddenly, piercing through the night, we heard a scream. At first we thought it might be a mountain lion, but there was something off about it, something unsettling. We all went silent, scanning our surroundings for the source of the sound. We had just started to relax and joke around about how fidgety we felt when suddenly my friend grabbed my leg and went completely silent. I looked over and saw them staring off towards the watchdog. Their face turned as white as a sheet, and I followed their gaze. Standing there at the foot of the watchdog was a woman, but she wasn't like any woman I'd ever seen before. At first, she looked beautiful, but then something strange happened. As the rest of our group noticed her and turned to look, her appearance changed. Her arm raised, her eyes turned into empty black holes, and her mouth hung wide open. But the scariest part was yet to come. She let out a scream that froze us all in terror. I quickly covered my ears and scrambled as far back as I could. I saw my friends doing the same, their faces filled with fear. We didn't understand what was happening, but as soon as the screaming stopped, we were scrambling over each other to get back to the safety of the car. Before we could even gather our belongings, we heard something outside of our camp. 
I didn't wait to see if it was the woman coming closer. My ears couldn't handle another scream like the one she had just unleashed on us. We hurried to gather our things, tossing them into the back of our cars without a care. Tents and poles got all mixed up, but we didn't mind. We just wanted to get out of there, fast. Just as we finished loading up, we heard it, faint music drifting from outside our campsite. We exchanged unsure glances, wondering what this new twist meant. Was it connected to the strange being we had seen earlier, or was it something else entirely? Maybe another camper? I didn't want to stick around to find out. I jumped into my car and started the engine. Everyone else piled into whatever car had space, and we zoomed away. As we approached town, we slowed down. I was leading the way, and I didn't want any of us to get pulled over for speeding. I started to think that maybe someone was playing a trick on us. But then I realized we didn't know anyone around here, and scaring tourists wouldn't be good for business. We found a hotel and got a few rooms, but none of us wanted to be alone. We all squeezed into one room, still feeling shaken and scared from the events of the night. We collapsed wherever there was space, just wanting to be close together. It's been years since that night. I've never gone back to the Badlands and I doubt I ever will. When my friends and I talk about it, which isn't often, it's just to reassure ourselves that we're not crazy, that it really happened. I know it sounds unbelievable, but what we experienced that night could make even a grown man tremble. Growing up, my family taught me not to believe in anything spooky or strange. They said it was all just made up stories, but I always loved watching Star Trek with its mysteries and adventures in space. That love stuck with me as I got older. Recently, something happened that made me question everything I thought I knew. It was during a camping trip at Bear Lake, a gorgeous spot in the mountains of Utah. My family and friends were all there, enjoying the warmth of the campfire and toasting marshmallows. The night was calm and peaceful until I noticed something moving in the water. At first, I thought it might be a fish or a log floating by, but then it came closer to the surface and I could see it clearly. It wasn't anything I'd ever seen before. It was huge, like nothing I'd ever seen before. Its body sparkled with shiny scales and its eyes glowed like fiery coals. When it opened its mouth, I saw rows of sharp teeth gleaming in the moonlight. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was frozen with shock. The next day, I decided to do some research. I went to the local library and talked to people who lived near the lake. They told me stories about a mysterious creature they called the Water Devil. But because of my beliefs, I didn't want to think of it as something evil. It was hard to accept. I used to think these tales were just make-believe, but now I wasn't so sure. For days, I couldn't stop thinking about the creature. I wanted to understand more about it, so I kept reading and asking questions. But the more I learned, the more puzzled I became. I felt really nervous after seeing that mysterious creature in the lake. Even when I wasn't near the water, I couldn't shake the feeling that it was still watching me. So I kept checking and double-checking our tent to make sure it was secure. My anxiety was through the roof. Luckily, nothing bad happened during our camping trip, but I couldn't shake off the fear and worry that I felt. I kept digging for more information. I read old newspapers and talked to people who had seen the creature with their own eyes. Then, I came across an old book in the library that had some interesting details. It said the creature's name was the Bear Lake Monster. I was shocked to learn that people had been seeing this creature for more than 150 years. Even Native American tribes had stories about it from way back in the 1800s. But the mystery remained unsolved. Some people thought it might be a kind of dinosaur that lived underwater. Others believed it could be a really big fish called a sturgeon. In the end, I couldn't find a clear answer about the creature, but discovering the stories and history behind the Bear Lake monster made me see things differently. When our camping trip ended, we packed up and went home. I knew I'd never forget the encounter with the Bear Lake monster, but I also realized I had to let go of my fear. That experience changed me. It made me realize there's so much we don't know in this world. Things we think are normal might not be. As a Mormon, I was taught not to believe in spooky stuff, 
but meeting the Bear Lake monster made me question what I believed. It showed me that there's more to learn and understand. Even though I was scared at first, I started to feel amazed and curious about everything. Seeing the Bear Lake monster made me realize there are still lots of things we don't know about in the world. It's like a big puzzle waiting to be solved. As someone who loves watching Star Trek, I couldn't help but think of my encounter with the Bear Lake monster, like one of the adventures on the Starship Enterprise. It felt like I was in my own space adventure, exploring new places and learning new things. After all the investigating, I couldn't stop thinking about what happened. Was the Bear Lake monster a new kind of animal nobody knows about yet? Or maybe it's from another world? I wondered about it all the time. Though I may never fully understand what the Bear Lake monster really is, I'm thankful for the experience. It taught me to stay curious about things we don't understand, even if they seem strange at first. At first, I started to doubt my beliefs as a Mormon because of this experience. People at my church thought it was silly, but instead of losing faith, it made me believe even more. It opened my eyes to new possibilities and made me feel closer to God. Now, I feel like I have a special mission from God. I want to help others be more open-minded, not just in my church, but everywhere. I think God wanted me to have this scary encounter for a reason. If God created the Bear Lake monster, who knows what other mysteries he made. There's so much we don't know about our world and the universe, and that's what makes life exciting. My pastor agrees with me, and we often talk about this experience and how it changed me at our church. In the quiet corners of our towns, there can be scary things hiding. Monsters and nightmares lurk where we least expect them. I have a story to tell you because I'm scared to keep it to myself, and I can't be the only one who knows about this scary creature. I live in Linwood, Pennsylvania, a small town near Delaware. Linwood isn't doing so well. Many people here don't have much money, and there's been a lot of problems with drugs and crime. Even my family has been affected. I've done some things I'm not proud of lately, but what happened the other night was the worst. Near my house, there used to be an old oil refinery. It closed down a few years ago, but the buildings and machines are still there. I found out it was like a treasure trove of metal scraps like copper piping. I snuck in twice before, cutting holes in the fence with special tools and taking what I needed. Security was lax, just one guard who didn't seem to care much. But then, something happened on my third visit. Like before, I snipped a hole in the fence and sneaked in. This time, I decided to explore deeper into the refinery. I hoped to find more valuable stuff. As I walked, I noticed a big building under some big pipes. It looked like it might be important. I felt excited as I got closer. Near the building, I saw something strange on the ground. Two piles of clothes neatly folded with shoes on top. The clothes were dirty and torn, just like mine. I figured someone else had the same idea as me, but why leave their clothes outside? I didn't dwell on it too long. I pried open the door and went in. As soon as I opened the door, I smelled something awful, like rotting meat. It made me feel sick, but I still went inside. I don't know why. Maybe I thought I'd find something valuable and be done with it. The room was mostly empty, but there was another door. I opened it and saw a faint red light inside. It was creepy. I took out my flashlight, but something inside me told me not to use it. I ignored that feeling and turned it on. What I saw made my blood turn cold. Hanging from the ceiling were two bodies, sewn together at the head. They swung back and forth like a gruesome swing set, and underneath them was a creature unlike anything I'd ever seen. It had a bird-like head with scars and exposed bone, and a pale human body covered in wounds and maggots. I can't find the words to describe how scared I was. I wanted to run, but I couldn't move. I felt like I was frozen in place. After what felt like forever, I managed to leave quietly. The creature didn't notice me, but as I stepped out, one of the bodies started moving and I heard a muffled cry for help. The creature heard it, and I couldn't stand it. I threw up. I ran as fast as I could, not looking back. I heard something behind me, but I didn't stop until I was outside. I can't tell the police. I'm too scared. I'd probably get in trouble for trespassing. I feel like a coward. 
Now I'm on a train to Florida and I have a friend there who said they'll help me get clean and start over. But the smell, the memory of that creature, it won't leave me alone and I hope I can find help. And I hope those people I saw, whoever they are, find a way to escape from that evil thing.